Hello and welcome. Uh, you may have noticed I haven't been around here much lately, but uh, well, it's the summer, my kids are off school, we've been traveling. Life is good and that doesn't involve quite as much time spent on YouTube as the rest of the year. So hopefully you've been uh, enjoying the summer and doing your own, uh, your own fun things and not missing me, but if you have been, then sorry about that. Uh, I'll probably be back to posting more regularly soon, but can't make any promises. Anyway, in that same low energy summer spirit, I thought I'd just do a, a quick fun one today. I'm going to do the case from uh, one of the recent esports battles, the Africa continent battle from the FMWC. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I recommend having a watch. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to watch and a and remarkably nail biting finish. Two uh, two people who finished first and second finished on the exact same score, despite you know many different levels, bonus questions, other com complexities. So. Uh, yeah, it was it was a fun one. So I'm going to dive in and do that now. So here's the case. Uh, the idea is, it's a game of tug of war. Uh, but you've, so you've got teams made up of kids, grown-ups, weightlifters, horses, and elephants, and you've got two different uh, teams facing each other. And so each person, you know, you've got a table here saying, you know, a kid can pull with force of 125 newtons, an adult with 500, a weightlifter with a thousand, etc. And then you've got the mass of each as well. And so, you know, by adding up, whatever, let's see here, we've got a team of 10 kids and six grown-ups and four weightlifters and so on. You can figure out the total pulling power of the team and the total mass of the team, um, and then answer various different uh, questions about it. Um, and then the, the last one gets into, okay, if we start shifting team members from the winning team to the losing team until, uh, until the winner switches, then how long does that take? So uh, you can see that the setup, the data setup is very kind of cleanly parallel the whole way down. This is probably quite a speed runnable one, but I don't have the energy for an actual speed run in me today, but we'll try and make it relatively quick. So let's just quickly look at the bonus questions first. Uh, team one consists of only kids. Team two consists of one elephant. Minimum number of kids required for team one to win. So pretty simple, divide an elephant's pulling power by a kid's pulling power, you get 20. So 20 kids equals one elephant, so it takes 21 kids to beat an elephant. By the way, this, uh, this you know, uh, green auto marking thing is uh, is something that is now built into the cases. And this is straight from the download from the FMWC website. So that's a nifty new feature. Uh, so a team pulls the rope with a combined force of exactly 100,000 newtons. What's the minimum possible mass of the team? So you could look at uh, smallest ratios of mass to force, or you can just go straight to a formula. Let's go 100,000. Uh, so we're going to divide by the force to get the number of team members and then multiply by the mass to get the team's mass. Uh, and that is 10,000. I think the answer is the weightlifter has the best ratio. And then the highest combined pulling force of a team from all the teams mentioned in the game task. So let's let's quickly do some setup for, uh, for actually weighing teams. I'm going to transpose uh, this array here. And then I'm going to call this force. I'm going to call this mass. Uh, so then, let's see how far out do the assumptions come. I think out as far as here. Yes. So I'll start in column U, just so that I don't have to expand as I go. Uh, and then I'm just going to say uh, max of. So, sorry. Let's start with the basics to figure out the weight of a team. If we've got 10 kids weighing 125, 10 grown-ups weighing 500, etc., etc., etc. Or sorry, that's I'm looking at the forces, but the mass is the second line. Uh, we can just use some product. So some product of this with mass gives you, uh, actually, let me just label this, I'm going to take team one mass, just call it mass one, mass two, you can do it in the same way, except you're going to want to copy it over to here. Is that lined up right? I think it is. Uh, so then we can just copy this down all the way to the bottom, uh, and then just take the max of that. No, that's not right. I must have some, something pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, let's see, maybe this one is not, it should be, no it is. Oh dear, <laughs> bad start. Uh, was the question mass or was it force? That might be where I'm going wrong. Uh, it was force, not mass. Okay, so we've done the mass, let's do force one, meaning force of team one, and force two. And then we can fix that. Uh, so again, it's just going to be some product of this, but now with force. Uh, and then copy that and move it over to, oops, sorry, and move it over to these columns here. Copy it all 
way down, and then we can do this. Move it over there. Okay, so now we can write. All right, so uh, level one, we're just setting up. Uh, what is the mass? Okay, so I've kind of already done that. So I'll just copy that there. Then we get those. Uh, question two, what is the net applied force? So in other words, the winning team's force minus the losing team's force. And here we can just say the absolute value of the difference. Or equivalently, you could say the, the max minus the min. Uh, those will give you the same answer. And we're calling that the net applied force that comes up in some of the later questions. Okay, question three, mass of the losing team. Uh, so... Um, I think it's going to be useful to have. Uh, just going to freeze pane so that these few headers are visible as I go down. Uh, okay, say winner. We'll say if force one is greater than force two, then team one wins, otherwise, team two wins. Uh, so then, now question three is the mass of the losing win. So I guess it's going to be useful to have loser as well. Or you can just do that as you go, but anyway, so 3 minus that gives you the loser. Uh, so then the mass of the losing team, we can just say index on mass by the loser. Uh, okay, so then question 4 is a very, very uh, strange bit of like physics 101 mixed in with this. Um, so we're interested in figuring out, okay, so we've figured out the net applied force, in other words, how, how much force is pulling from the winning team to the losing team, then we're going to apply that force to the mass of the losing team, uh, and that will help us figure out how fast the losing team is accelerating, and then we're accelerating them to a target speed. Uh, it's, it's very bizarre, but uh, if you just, you know, don't think about it too much, it's fine. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, net applied force which again is just the absolute value of the difference in the forces. Copy that down everywhere, and then we'll have uh, lose mass. In other words, the losing team's mass, and that's going to be index on these, losing team. And then, I'll just open that out a little so you can see it, and then, and then, and then, sorry, level four, here we are. So I'm going to want to say, uh, let me just come over here. So it shows it here. We want the acceleration is going to be the net applied force divided by the losing team's mass, and then we're interested in the target speed divided by that acceleration. I'll put it in brackets so that my dividings don't go all wrong, and we want to round that to a whole number. And if this works the first time, I'll feel good and a little surprised. And it does. Hooray. Okay. So the last one's a little more complicated. Um, because for the last one you're you're moving team members so in other words here uh, let's see it gives us the example so team well let's see we've got the forces here uh, sorry forces over here so the second team uh, is the winning team so then we're going to transfer team members from the winning team team two to the losing team team one and then repeat the game and do that again and again and again until team one wins uh, so let's see if we transfer an elephant pulls with a force of I think 2,500 Let's see, I'll just uh, force. Yes, elephant pulls with a force of 2,500. Uh, so if we move a couple of elephants from here, then this will go down to 38,000. This will go down up above 40,000. Uh, and so by the time, so we do that, we play the original game, play the game with one elephant moved, then play the game with two elephants moved. That's how you get to the, the count of three, which is which is that result there. So the, the quick way to have a go at this is to say, well, you know, A, I see lots of big elephant numbers here, and B, elephants are really strong, so elephants are probably going to be what decides it. And actually, that's, that's a reasonable uh, first effort. So what you can say is, take the net applied force, divide that by two times uh, an elephant's pulling power, uh, round, I guess we need to round up the zero decimal places, and then add one for the off by one that I described earlier. Uh, oh, do you have zero? Oh, sorry, because I didn't lock this in. Let me just lock that in. Copy it down. And you can see you get almost all the cases right. There are a handful of ones where uh, you need to move more than the elephants. But 
you know under uh, under time pressure that would uh, that would be a pretty good outcome uh, but let's see how we can take it all the way and actually figure out no matter how many you need to move where it is so the way I'm going to think about this is first I'm going to uh, pull up the winning team because that's where we're going to transfer from so winning team uh, and for that we're just going to say uh, if this equals one then this oops otherwise this might be a more elegant way to do that but never mind uh, so then what I want to figure out basically the idea is I want to figure out for each of these five groups we go from the strongest so first we transfer elephants until we run out of elephants then we transfer horses till we run out of horses so I want to work out after I've moved all the elephants what is the net applied force going to be after I've moved all the horses what is the net applied going to, force going to be uh, so I'm going to say net up force after moving group uh, so we'll start off moving none and that's just going to be our original net applied force I'll come down here and then let's say when we transfer all let's just put the force up here again for ease of reference the key thing to remember is that when you transfer an elephant it reduces the winning team by 2500 and increases the losing team by 2500 so it actually reduces the net applied force by twice the force of an elephant so it's going to be this minus two times this block times this so you can see after you transfer all the elephants in this case it's over uh, the losing team is already winning but in this case after you transfer all the elephants uh, the winning team is still winning and then we can carry this across oh sorry i just remembered as i went to move that that i've locked both the row and the column here which i shouldn't have i should have just locked the row because i want this to move across so now you can see i'm subtracting off the horses subtracting off the weightlifters and so on and figuring out what becomes of the net applied force and so you can see the few cases where um, where the elephants were not enough correspond to the cases where the net applied force after transferring all the elephants is still positive let's move this out here so we can see more than so here's one here's one uh, here's one and so on so this will let me figure out what is the sort of marginal group so in other words if the point at which it switches from positive to negative is going from elephants to horses then the last thing i move is going to be an uh, a horse so i'll move all the elephants none of the weightlifters none of the grown-ups none of the kids and then I'll just have to figure out how many horses so uh, let's say I want my net applied force before marginal group uh, and that's just going to be uh, we can do min ifs so I want basically the last one of these before it goes negative so the minimum of that where that is greater than zero uh, and I'll copy that down uh, then I want Marge group force. Uh, and how will I do that? I'm going to. So basically, what I what I want to do is come along here. So you know, in this case, the the marginal group is the elephants because that's the last. Uh, you know, reading from left to right, that's the last group where it's negative, or reading right to left, it's the first group where it's negative. Here, the marginal group is the horses. So I want to uh, basically look that up and return over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to x look up a zero. Uh, going from first to last and I'm going to return exact match or next below so let's sh show you what that'll look like so I'm going to x look up zero in uh, here uh, my return array is going to be this uh, array of or actually I guess I can just use the named range that that's referring to which is force uh, if not found is not relevant match mode is going to be exact match or next smaller and I think that's the default anyway but I always put it in just to be safe so you can see, you know, in most cases, the marginal uh, the marginal group is the elephants, but in a few cases, it's the weightlifters or the kids or the horses, which have these lower forces. And then uh, finally, uh, I'm going to want the number of the marginal group. So if the net applied force before I get to the marginal group is 7,375 and the marginal group has a force of 2,500 how many of that marginal group will I need to move before this switch is signed and again remember you just have to double it so it's going to be this divided by two times that uh, and we're going to round up to a whole number so round up comma zero 
that's the two elephants that you need to move to switch the sign there. Uh, and then, then we just need to figure out, so in this case, for example, we need to move five horses, but we also move all the elephants. So we're going to figure out how many moves before we get to the marginal group. And that's just going to be, again, any group where this number is positive is moved entirely. So we're just going to say some ifs uh, of the number in the group where this number is greater than zero. So that's, again, you'll see a lot of zeros here because in most cases we're only moving uh, we're only moving elephants. So there, there are no moves before the marginal group because the marginal group is elephants. Uh, and then once we have this, so let's say here we move 57 before we get to the marginal group and then we move six of the marginal group. So we make a total of 63 moves, adding those two together. And then we play one more game after those 63 moves. So the answer should be 64. So in general, the answer is going to be sum of these two numbers we calculated at the end here, plus one. And hopefully if I copy that down, it'll tell me Yes, that those are the right answers. Uh, and if I turn off my freeze pane, let's see, did we get it all? Oh, okay, I guess I changed something in here. So this bonus question has stopped being right now. I actually remember what I did. I put in the force here, uh, which made it go sad. And something might even depend on that. No, nothing depends on that. All right, I'll just delete it. And then, will I get my 1200? Yes, full score. All right. So anyway, like I said, that's all I have the energy for today. Uh, I might get back to some more, you know, serious financial modeling videos before too long, or I might not. No promises. I uh, hope you're enjoying the summer. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.